Hey everyone, I wanted to make this video because I didn't see any videos explaining what a gravity sort is or how it works. Um, this is also known as a bead sort, so I wanted to run through that with you guys. To start off, I just want to say that this is a novelty sort. It doesn't really have much practical use because the way that it actually sorts the numbers is very unconventional and has an exponential growth of calculations. The best way to understand a gravity sort is to think of an abacus. Let's think of an abacus that has no beads on it. The number of rows that our abacus will have is going to be equal to the maximum value in our array that we want to sort. So let's just think of sorting an array of numbers that has a maximum value of five. In our case, we will have five rows of numbers. Let's say we have five total entries. And in this case, we're just going to make it easy on ourselves and put it in reverse order. Let's list our numbers at the bottom, and each number represents how many rows we need to put beads on starting from the bottom. So for the first column, we want to store the number 5, and we're just going to put 5 beads on our abacus, one on each row. The next number we want to store is a 4, so we're going to put a bead on the first 4 rows and leave the 5th row empty. Keep going and we have 3 beads for the 3rd column, 2 beads for the 4th column, and 1 bead for the 5th column. You might see where I'm going with this, and you might see why this is called a gravity sort. Let's imagine turning the abacus on its side 90 degrees. All of a sudden, you can see the beads naturally sort themselves. But this begs the question about how practical this is programmatically. Well, the answer is, it's not really practical at all. Every number that you want to store in your array and sort, you have to break down into an array, and that array will contain Boolean values. If we want to store a three, we would basically have an array that says true, 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 false, false. So our sorting algorithm needs to take an input of an array, manipulate it as a two-dimensional array, and return a one-dimensional array. As you can probably tell, that's exponentially demanding on a computer. Our computational requirements for our computer is proportional to the number of numbers that you want to sort multiplied by the maximum number in that array. So if we wanted to sort 10 numbers between 1 and 10, we'd need to make 100 comparisons. However, if we wanted to sort 100 numbers between 1 and 100, that would be 10,000 comparisons. I've included some code in the description so that you, you can try this out yourself. The code is written in Java and can be run in the processing IDE. I hope this clarified how the sorting algorithm works. Let me know if you have any questions or if I got anything wrong. Thanks.